Hello folks and goats, this is Griffin with the Command Valley, bringing you a very hot take on another new card from Commander Legends. Uh, real quick, thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you need any cards from Commander Legends or for your decks, please head on over to the link in the description box below to GameGrid's website where you can order cards and get them shipped right to your house. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to patreon.com slash command valley and sign up today for some super awesome cool perks and join the discussion about all these Commander Legends previews that are going on right now. A few days ago, we got a preview for a very hot card, Opposition Agent, which created a lot of talk in the EDH community, and today was no exception, we got another one. So joining me today is Landon. Hey guys, I'm glad to be here. And we're just going to be doing our first takes and our first thoughts about a new card that came out just today, preview today. October 29th, 2020. Jeweled Lotus for zero mana. You have an artifact. Tap and sacrifice Jeweled Lotus and three mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast your commander. So already uh, pretty nuts. A pretty crazy uh, new card that's coming out in Commander Legends. But Lan and I specifically had differing uh, opinions and takes on this card. So I'll go ahead and start this off. My first take on this card, obviously this is basically the, the Commander Black Lotus, and if that's not already enough, to tell you that this card is probably too good in, in Commander, and the, the, by that I mean when Wizards comes out with a card that can come and be put into every single deck, and, uh, or, and not every single deck will want this Jeweled Lotus, but I'm going to say like 98% of decks want this, unless maybe you're a five color deck where your commander needs you know, all different five colors like the Ur Dragon or Child of Alara. Every other commander deck is going to want this, and it's extremely powerful in the decks that it's put in. So I'm of the opinion that this card is actually very unhealthy for the format in the way that it's going to, it's another auto include, it's another Soul Ring S card, another Arcane Signet that just goes into every deck. You don't have to think about it. There's no there's no downside to playing this card. In fact, it's only upside. And I think when you have a card like that, that's only upside, that costs nothing to play and only has upside for you in your commander deck, that's very, I'm very off put by this card. Landon, what do you think about this okay, card? Okay, I was going to say, uh, um, so I, I'm actually almost on the complete opposite end of the spectrum as Griffin. And a lot of times when we have hot takes or when we have these kind of debate type episodes, usually Griffin and I are actually like pretty close on the spectrum, just maybe a little bit to one side or to the other. But on this specific one, genuinely, I, I'm like complete opposite. Um, I kind of feel like a lot of people that are, that are saying and, and making statements such as this card needs to be banned or that this card is is broken and it shouldn't have been printed i kind of feel like those comments are coming from a place of of emotion like there are a lot of really high emotions right now and a lot of i, I guess i want to say animosity or hostility towards wizards of the coast and i'm really wondering if like if a lot of things have been happening with wizards of the coast you know the past couple of months if those things wouldn't have happened if there would have been this much of a reaction to this card it's kind of hard to say because you know it, it is what it is what's going on right now mm -hmm. with magic but in my in my personal opinion i don't think that this card belongs in every single deck and i've got like a whole bunch of points as to why like this card isn't quite as broken as people think it is and they're focusing too much on the fact that it's a black lotus and they're not focusing enough on the second half of the card which is a little bit more of a restriction than i think people are admitting to so so here's here's what my initial thoughts were because i've been on social media all day and i've seen a lot of the reactions from all sorts of from every every end of the spectrum and i will say this right now disclaimer i'm not saying that this card should be banned i i of course i am not in favor of any bans however there is a message that gets sent out with these cards uh that that can be in my mind that can be perceived negatively so when i saw this card i actually looked through the the top decks the top commander decks and even my own commander decks and i was thinking what what decks are not going to want these and every single one of my personal decks save for the new omnath wants this card in the deck whether it be sin triplets brian's stout arm collier of the vast Solvala heart of the wilds it just you can turn one you know more than half of the commanders turn to the other half of commanders it's it's so powerful to be able to just get them out immediately that it's it's uh, yeah that just it's off puts me i mean having a turn two send triplets or having a turn two 
And on EDH Rec, I actually went to EDH Rec and I looked at the, the, the top commanders that are being built right now just to kind of see what people are playing and how many of these decks are going to want a Jeweled Lotus in their decks. And some of the most powerful ones that I saw were things like Yarrick the Desecrated, where you can get Yarrick out on turn two to be able to play your, your other ETB creatures super quickly. You've got Muldrotha the Grave Tide that can come out on turn three and can replay it from the and can replay your old Lotus from the graveyard in case Muldrotha gets removed. I uh, just oh, it's just so powerful to be able to get those specific cards out on turn two and turn three, and that's just two of the most played commanders. I mean, you've got things like Eureka, Sisse, Witherlight Captain, Lord Windgrace. But this doesn't work with Yuriko. That's true. And again, that's why I say not every deck is going to want these, but every deck can use them. I mean, yeah. every deck can get their commander out now basically three turns early for the first time. And I, like to me, that's so powerful. That's so that's such a powerful effect. And like just But that's every the, that's like the top, top, top dream. So like you have to see this card in your opening hand or in the first two turns for that for that scenario to be realistic, right? So yeah, it's, it's like one card in the 99 um, that, and, and then like, I think it does get exponentially worse as the game goes on. Because like, I, I feel like top decking this late game when you need answers feels horrible. Like, it's, just, it's a terrible card to draw from mid to late game, which I would argue represents the largest half of the game. Because once you get your engine, like your, your card advantage engines, you know, started and going, you're going to be seeing a lot more cards. And I just don't know that this is the card that you want to be seeing. And I just don't know how how like effective one card is that only lets you you know cast your commander and it's not useful for the other 65x spells you're playing in your deck. For sure, and I would agree that it does get worse as as the game goes on. But honestly, if I'm playing a deck that that my commander's been removed multiple times and I basically draw a card that says discount your commander for three mana uh, to to play it again, I'm not going to be mad about that. So I agree that it it is worse as the game goes on, but the ceiling is just so high having it in your opening hand that the you know the the difference between having it in your opening hand and having it later in the game it might be it might be big but the card is still very good no matter where you have it it's i don't know because i've been comparing it to like um the medallions like sapphire medallion emerald medallion you know all the ones that make a color cost one less um and let's say you get a medallion on turn two you, you play it on turn two because we're in this scenario where we are making sure that we have Jeweled Lotus in our opening hand, so we'll say we have a Medallion in our opening hand. You play it on turn two, that is going to save you one mana per spell that you cast throughout the whole game, right? I think right. that's so much more useful than a Jeweled Lotus. Even though it costs two mana to play, if we can consistently get a Medallion and get it down on turn two, I think the, the value of that is worth more than a Jeweled Lotus. Yeah, and I think I think you do hold a, a very good point there that Jewel Lotus, it's a one time use. So that's that's the, the biggest the biggest disclaimer on the card is that it's a one time use and I would Yeah, and if, if you're you playing more than and if you're playing more than three colors, you might as well just be playing a lotus petal. Like if your commander is, is three different colors, okay, if it's more than five mana and it's three different colors, you might as well be playing a lotus petal. Or sorry, less than five mana, because you're gonna be losing that mana because you can't spend it on the colorless you see what I'm saying? It's like Kess, for example, or Sadisi, or Marchesa the Black Rose, or basically any, you know, one in three colors. You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm going to disagree there. I mean, it, every single one of those decks, I, w I would love to see those come out on turn tur turn two. You know, I would love to see a Marquesa out on turn two. And, and I would love to see, you know, one of the ones that's been brought up, like Goto, Banda Warlord, which, yeah, it does cost six. But get, Goto is just a combo enabler on its own. And getting that out on turn two or turn three. Oh, this is amazing in monocolor decks. Like, this is very good in decks that, you know, like getting Arcanist the Omnipotent down on, like, turn turn two. You could no turn three. Turn three, yeah. I mean, it's not bad. And yeah, it's what the a point that I've I've seen a counterpoint is that it, it's kind of like opposition uh, opposition agent where it's like, well, you know, you it, it, you can still remove the commander, like you still should play removal. But I'm just curious, like how many times how, can you use that as an excuse before it's like, okay, we've got too many things, so now we're just playing, you know, 20 pieces of spot removal because people are getting their commanders out so fast. That you have to be able to, to number one, have a lot of interaction in your deck, and number two, have it in your opening hand that costs one or two mana. You know, that the, the, the message that, that, that tells everybody is, I don't think that's a, a good thing. Because that restricts deck building 
to a point where it's like, well, now you have to play these cards because you're going to see Jeweled Lotus on the other side of the table that's going to get their commander out very quickly. I think it's significantly, significantly incorrect to alter your deck, any of your decks, to combat Jeweled Lotus. Because I think you'll be making changes that won't really be significant because I don't think you're going to see it that often. I guess unless it's like a big problem in your playgroup and everybody's running it, but I think even if everybody's running it and you're playing, you know, a bunch of games, you might only see it two or three times. And then maybe even a smaller percent of that time, it, are they going to have it in their opening hand? Right. So I, I, I don't know. I, I'm hesitant to want to change any of my decks to like be like, oh, Jeweled Lotus is out. Now I have to like be wary of people, you know, getting it out consistently and getting their commander out on turn one when I'm already kind of building my deck to make sure that I can deal with my opponent's creatures and and, and commanders. So I'm already playing removal, For sure. like cheap removal too. Cause like I want to be able to cast multiple spells in a turn anyways. So that's kind of pushing me towards a, a lower CMC, but. Here's the question I have for you. Of the decks that you have, how many of them do you would you not put Jeweled Lotus in? No, I'm not putting it in any of them, yeah. You're not gonna put it in any of them. Is that just a personal choice or do you believe that they're just not good, it, Jeweled Lotus is just not good enough for your decks? It's just not good enough. Because like you can't abuse it either. It's not like a Lotus Petal or a Lion's Eye Diamond where if you have like a Yawgmoth's Will or an Underworld Breach, I, I can recur that, right? Like I can get those artifacts back and use that mana over and over again. It's not like a dark ritual that, you know, combos off with a thousand year storm, you know? And I like to play spell slinger decks. That's something that like I'm always looking for is how can I break this spell by using it a million times? I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think the setup is for this card? Like what are like the, the hidden conditions that you have to make this card good? Like, what do you think they are? So like, what are the downsides? Not the downsides, but like, I guess maybe my, my question was a little bit fishing. I was looking for a specific answer, but like, in my mind, I was thinking you can make that mana, but like there are ways of making so unspent mana, like floats in your mana pool, like Crufix, for example, like you can use that mana with Crufix out and then just let it fizzle into colorless mana. And then boom, you can use that for other spells. Like, I think that has extra synergy with a commander more than just being able to bring the commander out. Well, yeah, I mean, in in Kerfix, it's just even better uh, because yeah, you've got extra utility on it. But say um, one that I was looking at was Tulane Teller of Tales. Like the, the reason why it's five mana is because its effect is so good that it has to be at five mana in order for the deck to kind of stay in, in an appropriate power level. But once you, you have a Jeweled Lotus and you can just, you know, mull until you find a Jeweled Lotus and play on turn two, then you can assure that every time you cast a creature, now you're drawing a card beginning on turn three or even turn two in some cases yeah but then jeweled lotus like if you draw it and you wanted to draw a creature then that just kind of stops your momentum so like yes i do recognize like the potency of getting you know chulain out really early but like what is more common seeing it in the opening hand or seeing it later in the game and i think that's really the big question here yeah i see your point i mean for me the me for me the question is less um how often are you going to see it and more how many decks is it going to go in because you, you might not see it yourself very many times but you're going to be playing commander with a lot of people you're going to play playing a lot of decks and and all of a sudden you're going to run into maybe 30 percent of the time i mean how many times do you see somebody pull a turn one soul ring and now all of a sudden it's now going to be turn one soul ring with a jeweled lotus you know there's so many ramifications to a jeweled lotus in going in every single deck that that now you're you're facing against it even if you're not playing it yourself but i'm really not like even if they were to get you know the jeweled lotus out and cast your command it's like great like you lost a card in your hand you got your commander out and like okay you're down two three cards from your hand you're probably running low on fuel like i just i wouldn't be that afraid of it and like, even if they drop it late game, it's like, well, yeah, sure. You can cast your commander again, but that like, it's a card that literally doesn't even let you play other spells in your deck. And you have a lot more spells in your deck than you have commanders in your command zone. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I just need to see it in action and like just play against it or play test it. But like my initial thoughts is that I'm just not super impressed with it. I'd rather have like a gilded Lotus, honestly. Really? Yeah, that, that's, that's super interesting. And i like, I've seen this, I've seen this opinion going around that it's, it's it's being hyped up too much and i think maybe there is a case for it being like people are freaking out about it too much i think my my reasoning behind my disdain for jeweled lotus is again the message that it sends out to number one commander players where it's like hey we're going to print cards that are so that are going to be so common like more soul rings and arcane signets but i mean for me jeweled lotus is just 
even better than those two cards it's perfect for commander decks and the more that you have of those the less cards that you're able to to build around um i mean you always have the choice not to put these in your deck well and my and my argument is like you can choose not to put this in your deck and i'm here to say that you are not going to be at a disadvantage because of it i, I and i think that's gonna that's gonna re remain my point is like you don't have to put this in your deck and you don't have to feel bad about not doing it and i don't believe that your deck is going to be any weaker for it like i don't feel like my storm cast deck is going to be any weaker than any other you know random creature deck or you know deck that can get a jeweled lotus out on turn one right so i think i agree with you we're definitely gonna have to see it in action see what kind of what the ramifications actually end up being you know in person seeing it across the table and seeing it on our side of the field and kind of how it feels yeah. to, to to play those so um landon rests his case uh at just having it be a lot less of a big deal than people are making it out to be i'm gonna still rest my case that i think it is um it, it is going to be problematic and and i think it is going to create a lot of um, negative emotions in people seeing this card and you know specifically when i see my opponent you know cast a yarrick on turn two and i'm not holding up any you know <laughs> uh, i don't have any path to exiles in my hand so that's going to be just a, a a massive problem to deal with but but i think like yeah you just say you know good game like you got a jeweled lotus in your opening hand like great let's move on to the next game or let's you know shuffle up again y you know what i'm saying it's like yeah, it's gonna, they're going to propel themselves a lot farther forward, but like, Commander, it's meant to have fun, and like, I really think that my opponents should also be having fun at the same time as me, and if fun for them is getting their Commander out super early, like, I'm okay with that, because we can always shuffle up and play another game, we can, you know, get another take, get a fresh start, and I, that's why I think I really like Commander, is there's just so much room for like, everything, really. And as long as you're genuinely a nice person and you're trying to like get along with your opponents and you're trying to communicate, I think you're going to have a good time almost no matter what cards are being played and when they're being played too. And you bring up probably the best point and I'm, I'm going to mirror that commander is it, it is a game and we can all talk about the, the details of the game and what certain cards mean for the game. But in the end, it is a game and it's a game meant to be played with with other people. And, and the point is to have fun. So yeah, I'm going to totally agree with that. And you know, if you want to put a jeweled lotus in your deck, I, you know, more power to you. I think you, the purpose of commander is to have fun. And if you want to have fun putting jeweled lotus in your deck, then by all means, go for it. I mean, I, I think even me, I'm going to be playing jeweled lotus in, in my deck. So assuming it's not a $100 card, like it's really important. <laughs> Now, which is ridiculous it's but. it's gonna it's gonna be commander legends is absolutely nuts i've got one more just thought about this card maybe you can add your thoughts to this if you thought about this too but i like the the chaotic side in me is a little bit excited to see wizards basically like taking their reserve list and just like laughing at it like right in the face it's like ha we are going to take reserve list cards we're going to alter a little bit and we're just going to sell them to commander players like i think that there's just like some type of irony to that it's like well why does the reserve list like even need to exist that they're going to do stuff like this and oh, i'm just no, wondering absolutely. like how many other reserve list cards are we going to get like pseudo copies for like it, it absolutely is and and that was exactly my feeling today is the the meme that that kept going through my head was um in futurana the or futurama the shut up and take my money is that i know exactly what wizards is doing they are taking cards from the reserve list and and they're saying well now that we recognize the commander is the most popular format let's just slapstick commander onto all these reserve list cards and yeah shove it's them like gaia's cradle faces. add one green to your mana pool for each creature you control but you can only spend that mana on your commander it's your like, commander <laughs> like every single reserve list card is going to have its own like a uh, reprint a uh, functional reprint but it's only going to be <laughs> able to work for commanders for commander. like like gilded drake right like uh <laughs> When it enters the battlefield, you can switch it with any commander. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just something that I thought was, like, a little bit comical. It's just, like, some of the things, like, some of the weird, like, quirks to magic, like the reserve list. I just, I think that there's just so much irony in this card. It's like they're dancing around it, like, the, the idea of the reserve list, but, like, uh, they won't do anything about it. No. But commander <laughs> players, like... We're, we're hot we're hot targets <laughs> we are because we're money bags you know you first you reprint up uh vampiric tutor you make opposition agent and then you create a jeweled lotus they know exactly what they're doing oh yeah they're wise so but lastly we want to hear from you guys what do you think of jeweled lotus do you think it's come out as something that's good for commander do you think it's bad for commander and what does that even mean let us know in the comment section below we'd love to hear your thoughts on the card and, and what you think about it. And if you're gonna be playing this in all of your decks, some of your decks, or none of your decks, we super appreciate you guys watching and listening to Len and I ramble on. 
we hope you guys kind of enjoy this type of dialogue. Uh, there's a lot of like emotions high right now. It's kind of fun to talk about this kind of stuff and just kind of like dive into it. Um, I will say that I'm sure that there are a ton of memes that could be made surrounding this card. So if you guys can like come up with some super cool jeweled lotus memes, um, you should do that and send them to us. I think that would be hilarious. You guys should meme the heck out of jeweled lotus. Anyways, that's the only purpose for this card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. A quick reminder to check out our social media links in the description box below. And also another reminder that we stream Brawl every Tuesdays at 7 p.m. at Mountain Standard Time. And we'll be talking about all the spoilers on stream as well. So please head on over to twitch.com slash command valley and check out our stream. But after all that, we appreciate you guys watching and we hope to see you guys next time for our next super broken card debate. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend.